Hello, my name is Kyle Page, and I've only undertaken this project by myself since Christmas. So, so the reason why I wanted to do this is because I see the space industry as quite a large industry at the moment. It's kind of growing quite exponentially fast. So I was used, trying to find out what we, sh what we can do to reduce the damage that we can take by traveling to other planets or other solar systems. I, to do this, I used uh, MIR-1 beetles, which are the scientific name is Tenebrio Molitor, to model the effects of this. So, as I just said, one of the biggest barriers is the ability to survive for multiple generations because of how slow our speed is in relative to the speed of the rest of the universe. So, my aims were to set up a modern environment for deep space travel, which was like pretty much just a radiation source in a box with some beetles. To mo I wanted to monitor and analyze the effects of this to the beetles, so reproductive success, so how many offspring there were per like sort of week which it wasn't really that much, but it's still quite good to have. To maintain this culture for 12 to 40 months, it, currently it's only been about six months, so I've got another six to eight to go. So this is the one of the boxes we used. We had two of these. We had one with the source and one for control. This, you see the, the black paper is to sort of encourage the beetles to go there because they prefer a dark spot. This is what it looks like when you use a Timpix chip to sort of map out data and sort of this is what comes up. And here are my results for different areas of the box from the radiation source. Each different color represents a different sort of di distance from that initial radiation. So for example, the blue is without any sort of protection from the chip to the source. Sort of orange is for sort of like a small la layer of membrane between each two sort of for like, let's say, sort of the oats that are used for the for the beetles and the worms to go through, and the grey is sort of for the worms because they can't be drop they get dropped down into a lower section, which is used so the beetles don't cannibalize them. And thank you for listening to my presentation. So, did you find a difference in the beetles that were exposed to radiation versus your control group? Um, the control group seemed to last for lo a lot less longer and have less uh, visible offspring, but I can't draw conclusions because this has only been one generation. I'm going to look between multiple generations to see if there's any discrepancy between the two. So because you're testing this with uh, beetles, and it, um, do you think there might be a different reaction with how uh, insects react to being exposed to radi radiation and humans react to being exposed to radiation because you're trying to compare the two? Um, I would say there is because we are an endoskeleton, so we have quite a soft layer on of our skin, so we can sort of we absorb the radiation a lot easier, whereas beetles and insects are usually exoskeletons, so they sort of have a harder sort of shell, so they have a more of a natural protection against the exposure they get. Yeah, very interesting. Well, um, thank you very much again. That was fantastic. Congratulations. <laughs>